So today we are going to look at this whole thing that's called protein synthesis. And we've been talking about DNA, we've been talking about RNA, and you know to remember the number three. So there's three letters in DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, and there's three letters in RNA, ribonucleic acid, and that these are both made from these things called nucleotides. And nucleotides have three parts. They have a sugar, a phosphate, and a nitrogen base. And we've been talking about how the nitrogen bases make up the backbone. Excuse me, the nitrogen bases are the genes while the sugars and phosphates make up the backbone. So when we talk about book covers or the paper that things are written on, that's just the sugar and phosphates. The actual words, the actual pages, the recipes, those are your nitrogen bases. And so when we made DNA, we made DNA through DNA replication. And with DNA replication, we took the piece of DNA and we used this enzyme called DNA helicase to unwind the DNA. And it just unwound it one little piece at a time. And then an enzyme called DNA polymerase came in and started photocopying it. So it made sure that the A's and the T's went together and the G's and the C's went together. And then RNA, excuse me, DNA ligase came in and glued it together. So in the end, we had two cookbooks and they were exact copies of each other. Well, DNA is the cookbook. It's got, you know, thousands and thousands of genes in it and it has to stay in the nucleus. But when you want to make a recipe, you don't need to carry the entire cookbook. You don't need to go online and download every single recipe that this person has ever, ever, ever written. You just need one recipe. You just want one recipe. You just need to photocopy that one recipe, or you need to take a picture of that one recipe, or just download that one recipe. And that's where RNA comes into play. And so we talked about RNA and how RNA has three differences from DNA. They both are made from nucleotides, but in the case of DNA, DNA uses the sugar deoxyribose. RNA uses the sugar ribose. DNA has two covers, a front and a back, so it is a double helix. RNA is just like a page that just has one thing written on it. So it is a single strand, and somehow the body has to know real fast what's DNA and what's RNA. So DNA uses the nitrogen bases adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine, and RNA uses the bases adenine, guanine, cytosine, and uracil. Well, when you need to make a recipe, you don't need the entire cookbook, but you also don't want to carry the entire cookbook back to your house. You don't need to download the entire cookbook. So when your body needs to make a protein, it doesn't want DNA to leave the nucleus because DNA is nice and it's safe. But remember, the proteins are made at the ribosomes, so the ribosomes are like your kitchen. So you have to have a way of getting the recipe from the safety deposit box where this cookbook is locked away to your kitchen where you can actually use the recipe. And this is the process that we call protein synthesis. Now, first and foremost, when we talk about protein synthesis, we're gonna be talking about what we call the genetic code. And the genetic code is a sequence of nitrogen bases along DNA. So what we have here is DNA, and you know that because it has two sides, and it's got thymine. Remember the dotted lines here represent the hydrogen bonds that hold it together. Right here, I have a single copy. You can see how they are. So here I photocopied the recipe or I've taken a picture of the recipe. That's my messenger RNA. And down here, I have my measuring cups and my measuring cups are my transfer RNA. And remember transfer RNA, um, one transfer RNA carries one amino acid. So up here I have codons. Codons are three bases in a row on DNA that tell me an ingredient. Excuse me, these are triplets on DNA. Down here I have codons, and codons are three nitrogen bases in a row on messenger RNA that tell me what ingredient I need. And down here I have anticodons, because they're gonna match up. And these are three nitrogen bases in a row on transfer RNA that tell me what I'm going to need. Now, proteins themselves are long chains of amino acids. We've talked about this before. And there are 20 different amino acids in nature. So all based on how you put those amino acids together, you're going to get all these different kinds of proteins. And we've already talked about the number three and how every three nitrogen bases in a row tells me one ingredient. I remember the ingredient that I'm going to use is called an amino acid. Now when I'm making a protein, I'm not using the DNA. Remember the DNA is the cookbook. It's locked away at the safety deposit box. I just have a photocopy. So, and I'm at the ribosome. So when I am making the protein, I'm actually using a piece of RNA. And remember three 
nitrogen bases on a messenger RNA is called a codon. Now, with all the letters that are together, there are 24 codons in the genetic code. So I've got four letters, there's 20, there's 64 ways, man, I'm getting everything mixed up today. There's 64 codons. There's 64 different ways I can put three letters together. So like I can have AAA, I can have AAG, AAC, AAU. That's just with changing the last letter, I've got four different combinations. Well, we have figured out what the genetic code means. And so we put it into this nice little arrangement right here. And what you'll do is, sorry, it's a little shaky. If you have AAA, you find A over here first, then you find A up here, and then you all come together. And so that is the amino acid lysine. So when your body sees AAA, it knows, oh, I need this ingredient. Now when your body sees CCC, it goes C, C, C. It means the ingredient proline. Now if you'll notice, some amino acids have four different things that code for them or even more. The, la the first two letters in the sequence are the most important ones. A lot of times, as you can see here, you can switch the last letter. And if you switch the last letter, it doesn't make a difference. So CCU, CCC, CCA, CCG all mean that you need the ingredient proline. Now, three of yours are what we call stop codons. So right here, you have UAA, UAG, and UGA. Those, just like when you read a sentence, you have a capital letter and then it lets you know that the sentence starts, and you have a period at the end that lets you know when the recipe is over. These are the periods. So when you reach one of those, your ribosome knows that the protein is finished. It has finished the recipe. So there can be more than one codon for an amino acid. So C, U, 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 C are the same thing. Look at all the things that mean leucine. We've got all these pros. We've got all these glys. So there can be more than one codon for an amino acid. And the genetic code is universal. All codons code for the same amino acids in all organisms. So it doesn't matter if you're a bacteria, if you're a virus, if you're a dog, if you're a cat, AAA is always going to mean the same thing. So the first thing we have to look at is protein synthesis. And protein synthesis is when you are making a protein. And it has two parts to it. You have transcription and you have translation. Now transcription is when your body takes DNA and uses it to make RNA. All RNA is made the exact same way. I'm just going to use messenger RNA as my example. So you need to make a protein and so you go to your cookbook and you find the recipe that you want and you just photocopy that recipe. And remember the photocopy of that recipe is going to be called messenger RNA. And transcription is going to take place in the nucleus. Well then, I'm going to take the photocopy or the picture or I've downloaded the one recipe that I need and I'm going to take it to my kitchen. And the kitchen is the ribosome. And I'm going to use my downloaded copy, just that one page, to make my protein. And this is a process called translation. So make sure you don't get transcription and translation mixed up. Transcription is how we make RNA and that happens at the nucleus. Translation is how we make a protein and that happens at the ribosome. So in the case of transcription, transcription is how we take DNA and we use it to make RNA. Okay. Now, like I said, it does take place in the nucleus and it's gonna make a copy of DNA. Now, when we talked about DNA replication, we talked about three steps. The first thing that happened was DNA got unwound and DNA used an enzyme called DNA helicase to unwind. And you only unwind, or you, excuse me, only unwound one section at a time. And then you photocopied that section using an enzyme called DNA polymerase. And then as DNA polymerase was photocopying, the DNA helicase moved down and unwound the next section. But when DNA helicase attached, your DNA knew it was going to totally unwind and it was going to photocopy every single recipe. So in the end, you were making two new cookbooks. Well, this time, I don't have to unwind every piece of DNA. I only need to unwind the one recipe I need. So I'm going to have to use a different enzyme. Okay. Oops. Anyway, so I don't have it on here. So just listen to what I'm talking about. Okay. So in the case of transcription, let's just say right here, 
is the enzyme or the recipe that I need to photocopy. So step one in the making of RNA is still unwinding DNA. Step one is still going to be unwinding DNA, but I'm going to use a different enzyme to do that. If DNA helicase attaches, I'm going to unwind DNA completely a section at a time. And DNA knows to make DNA. I only have to unwind one piece of DNA, wherever that recipe is that I want. So I'm going to use a different enzyme. I'm going to use an enzyme called RNA polymerase 1 or RNA polymerase 2. And I'll explain the difference. Notice when we make RNA, we only make one page at a time. When you're printing something, you can only print one page at a time. So we are printing out the recipe so I can take it home and use it. I can only print one page at a time. So DNA can only make one piece of RNA at a time. So if I need to make messenger RNA, I'm going to need a different enzyme than if I make transfer RNA because my DNA has to know what am I making. So let's say I want to make messenger RNA. I'm going to use RNA polymerase 1. RNA polymerase 1 attaches. It unzips this and it says photocopy this side. If I want to photocopy the other side, I have to use a different enzyme. And that's what RNA polymerase 2 is. And RNA polymerase 2 says, hey, make transfer RNA. But they're both going to be made the same way. If DNA helicase unwinds it, it knows I'm going to photocopy every single page and I'm going to make DNA. If RNA polymerase 1 or 2 attaches, it's just going to open it up to the recipe that it needs and it's only going to photocopy one side. So if RNA polymerase 1 attaches, let's say it photocopies this side and it makes messenger RNA. If RNA polymerase 2 attaches, it'll photocopy that side and it'll make transfer RNA. Right. Now, just like when we made DNA, so we unwind the DNA. If I want to make DNA, I use DNA helicase. If I want to make RNA, I use RNA polymerase 1 or 2. I have to make sure that everything links up. So in DNA, I had DNA polymerase, and it went in and it made sure my A's and T's and G's and C's were linked up. Well, I still have to make sure that everything links up like it's supposed to. My A's are where they're supposed to be. My U's are where they're supposed to be. My C's and G's are where they're supposed to be. So this time, I'm going to have what's called RNA polymerase 3. RNA polymerase 3's job is to make sure that my A's and U's go together, and my T's and my G's go together. So it's going to make sure that my things are matching up like they're supposed to. And then we're going to wind everything back up. So when we made DNA, we used DNA ligase to glue everything back together. Well, here we're going to use RNA ligase to wind everything back together. So we still are going to have unwinding. We're still going to have photocopy. And we're still going to have wind everything back together. When we made DNA, DNA helicase unwound it. But it's going to unwind it piece at a time and it will eventually unwind everything. DNA polymerase came along and make sure everything matched up. So all the words matched. And the DNA ligase came along and it closed everything up. It zipped your DNA back together. And in the end, you had two matching pieces of DNA. In transcription, we still have step one. We're still going to wind, unwind it. But we're just going to unwind the one recipe that I need. And remember, I know the recipe starts at the start. And I know the recipe ends at the stop. And remember, in DNA, the start is TAC. So RNA polymerase 1 or 2 just unzips the one piece. Then RNA polymerase 3 comes in and starts to put my Legos together. And then RNA ligase comes in, comes in, closes my DNA back, and puts my messenger RNA or whatever together so that it can float away. And all this is going to happen in the nucleus. So now I've got my cookbook. It's closed. It's locked up. It's safe. And now I have the photocopy of the recipe that I need. So like I said, this would just be like you going to the library and opening up a cookbook and taking a picture of the one recipe that you want. Or going online and finding a recipe for a chocolate chip cookie and downloading it. Or printing it off so you can take it home and use it. 
So now I have my photocopy. I can actually go to my kitchen and make my protein. And when I go to my kitchen, that's going to be what we call translation. So translation is where I'm going to take my recipe, which is messenger RNA, and I'm going to use it to make a protein. And it also has three steps. And translation is going to take place at the ribosomes. Now, you're going to need to change your fill-in-the-blank note sheet because I hate the way that it's worded. Okay. You need to word it because translation reads messenger RNA. Okay. When you make a recipe, you don't turn the page into whatever it is you're making. It's not magic. Okay. You read the recipe and you use the recipe to make whatever it is that you need to make. Well, that's what translation is. The ribosome is going to read the recipe, which is the messenger RNA, and it's going to figure out what ingredients you need which are the amino acids, and then it's going to put it in the mixing bowl, it's going to mix it together, and it's going to make the protein that you need to make. Okay. Now, likewise, you're going to have three steps. Okay. You're going to see that step one is called initiation. Step two is going to be called elongation. And step three is going to be called termination. Now, your note sheet is a little bit different than what the way that I teach it. So I'll let you know what to write when. Okay. Now, remember, in the case of transcription or translation, I'm going to take my recipe and I'm going to read it. Well, just like any good cook knows, before you start making the recipe, you need to make sure you have all of your ingredients. Okay. Well, step one is what we call initiation. And in initiation, you're the chef. You're the ribosome. You're holding the recipe, which is the messenger RNA, in your hand, and you're scanning the ingredients. And you make sure you have all of your measuring cups in front of you. Well, that's what happens in initiation of translation. The ribosome gets the photocopy of the recipe, and all the transfer RNAs line up. Remember, transfer RNA are your measuring cups. They're carrying your ingredients. And your ingredients are your amino acids. So in initiation, you're basically getting ready to start making your protein. So the ribosome is holding the recipe in its hand, and you've got all of your measuring cups, which are your transfer RNA, lined up in front of you. And then basically, you do what's called elongation. And with elongation, I'm going to flip it around over here. With elongation, I say, oh my goodness, AUG. So on the ribosome, I yell out AUG. So the measuring cup that matches that goes, oh, that's me. Here's my ingredient. And it puts it in the bowl. Then your ribosome says, thank you. And it goes to the next ingredient, UCU. So the measuring cup that matches goes, oh, that's my ingredient. And it adds its ingredient to the mixing bowl. And remember, the mixing bowl is the ribosome, and I'm making a protein. So this is amino acid one. And this is amino acid two. And I'm going to put a little string in between them to hold them together. Remember that little string is called a polypeptide bond. Excuse me, it's called a peptide bond. And then the amino acid, and then the ribosome goes back and it reads the next part of the ingredient, CAG. So the measuring cup that matches it goes, oh, that's me. Here's my ingredient. So I'm basically tying my amino acids together. I am elongating my protein. And eventually, I'll reach the end. And remember, the end is called the stop. And when I reach the stop, there's no measuring cup. The measuring cup is empty. So my ribosome knows that the protein is done. So you've got this part right here. Okay. One and two are both what we call initiation. So the start codon attaches to the, of the messenger RNA attaches to the ribosome. That's where the ribosome basically holds on to the recipe and starts to read it. The transfer RNA, your measuring cups will line up with your amino acids. So you haven't started anything yet, but this is the start of making your protein. Step three and four is elongation. This is where the ribosome calls out the code, the measuring cup that matches it goes, oh, here's my ingredient, and all the ingredients line up and get tied together. And eventually, you reach the stop, which is what we call termination, so you know 
that the recipe is finished. And keep in mind the start codon is always AUG. So the ribosome is going to start reading at the first AUG that it sees. And you can say, okay, I need this ingredient. So here you can see my little amino acids, remember, are always circles. And there I'm tying them together. I'm elongating my protein. So just remember, each transfer RNA molecule carries a specific amino acid. And remember, three bases on messenger RNA are called codons, and three bases on transfer RNA are called anticodons. And then we have all these different amino acid charts. You'll not be asked to memorize which letters mean one amino acid, but you will need to know how to read them. And so this is just a different way. You always go one, two, three. So if we're looking at GAG, -G, we go G. A, G, and it's glycine. Okay. This is what we call the genetic code. So again, remember, with transcription, this is where you take DNA and you use it to make RNA, and this is going to happen at the nucleus. Okay. DNA replication makes DNA. Three steps, you unwind with DNA helicase, you copy with DNA polymerase, and you wind everything back up with DNA ligase. Transcription, three steps, you unwind with RNA polymerase one or two, so you know, am I making messenger RNA or am I making transfer RNA? You photocopy with RNA polymerase three, and you put everything back together with RNA ligase. Translation still has three steps. This is where we take the RNA and we use it to make the protein, and it's going to happen in the ribosome. You have initiation, elongation, and termination.